Okay. Uh... Right. Follow Patrick Cairns' facial expressions to understand his moves. Push, restrain, or idle. Plan your counter strategy. Pay attention to your stamina. Okay. Push and restrain. So he's trying. He's restraining. I don't know what I'm doing. So, okay, so angry face. No, angry face is pushing. With no expression, he's... I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, do I have to press the button? Oh, I, oh, he, oh, it's tapping. It's repeatedly tapping the button. Okay, so he's pushing. There we go. So... I'm going to let him build up, and then he's going to... Don't want him to push me down. I'm doing this badly, aren't I? Right, push, 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 You're restraining. Ah. This is such a miss. This is, I'm doing so badly with this stamina, aren't I? Ah. Oh no, I'm so close. Rah. No, I need to I need to let my sound build back up. Rah. No. You're restraining. You're all pushing. Go, 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 go. No. Build the stamina back up. I I've no idea what its expression should be. Let's stamina go back up. Strain. Push, 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 Yeah. Yeah. See? You were lucky. I wasn't focused. Let's go again. All right. Let's have a quick look at him. So he's got a new looking ring. It's kind of newish. Hat is un unimportant. Stains, cheap clothes, strong hands could have could have dealt, done the uh, harpoon. Yellow nails, so he's a smoker, dipping into the tobacco, and he's a sailor, which we knew already. He's a sailor who smokes. So, all right, in game. I'm ready to try again. Fine. If you want me to take all your money, no problem with that. Right, so it's about matching his face and making sure we don't run out of stamina. Yep. Right. No, so he's, he's so he's restraining there. So he's restraining there. Right. Go 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 go. Okay. He's restraining. He's pushing. He's not. He's pushing. He's not. Ah. I don't know, I think he's restraining there. Yeah, he's restraining there. Oh no, he's not. Stand it. Go, 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 go. Yeah! Beat you twice. Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. Hey, I beat you really twice. To buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. Cheers. Yar. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Hmm. What do you mean? You've got? Have you got no job? Why do you say poor? You're not working. I'm a harpooner. But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. So you're a harpooner, eh? A harpooner? Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Bold Wallace, Dan Black Peter, Great Roger. We sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. How'd you get a name like Black Peter? Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumours about that one. 
he was the worst of them all. He was a liar, a violent too, swigging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as great Roger. Guessing he was great. I see. Yes, I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. How about another drink? Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her. And he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she'd foundered. And they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. Right, well, who was he? And who oh. was he? I just stopped doing the voice. <laughs> I don't know. During the crossing, me and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. Long talks. His baggage is just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye, even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course... Nobody could ask Black Peter about it. Thrown overboard. But you know, don't you? You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night. Two days before we sighted the Shetland lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. Those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this... Stay between us, all right? Of course. Hmm. Well, I mean, that sounds. I mean, I think there's a few stories along those lines where. No, not sign of four. Is it Study in Scarlet where it's along those lines? Oh, I haven't read the books in a while. Where he's um. Where he knows everyone's done wrong and he's kind of picking the people off. I don't know. But uh, we'll try and plant the pouch and see if you see if it is his. Back in a second. Are oh, you might have to wait, has he? I'll be here with my drink. Right. So what do we know about him then? Patrick Cairns is an experienced harpooner currently facing unemployment and poverty. He can be found most often in the Sea Witch, a public house deemed popular by the sailors whom he arm wrestles for money. Like many of his kind, he's a heavy smoker, indicated by his yellow yellow fingernails. And drop that in, shall we? Here it is. <laughs> you couldn't have put it in, a, in. You couldn't have changed his voice, could you? Just for that bit as well. Bit random. All right. That was quick. <laughs> oh, have you got some tobacco? Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, oh, oh That's a little f forward, isn't it? Oh, we should keep in touch then. Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He <laughs> the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe. If you like, I... I'm done here. It's time to leave. Right, well, we may as well. Where are we headed next? We'll head back to Baker Street. That might give us some insight. Well, we're on the way, we'll have a gander here. Right. Patrick Kearns with Kearns Pouch, so we know. Kearns has confirmed that the couch belongs to him. This means that he was at the scene of the, gout get mur scene of the murder. Right, it proves a visit. We don't, it doesn't necessarily mean he did it. It means he was there, although I wouldn't be surprised if he did do it. Okay. That's frustrating. So if I just say it proves his guilt, what does that do? Like, add more information? Oh, it does. And because we've said... So we've got the stolen valuable papers. The feat of strength says that Cairn's guilty. If I say it proves his visit... Ah, I see. So if I say he's got motive, because oh, they all have a motive, 
and then say a lucky throw. That doesn't do anything. I don't know why is this red? Because they all have a motive. They all do have a motive. Ah, it's because these don't connect properly. So you say he's retrieving. And desperate jealousy. But then, because... Oh, I see. So if I say that he's innocent... Then that says that Hurtley's guilty. I think... Whoa, 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 whoa. Continue the investigation. I think... He was looking for the papers. I think that could have well just been harmless flirting. Which means that proves his innocent. You see different colours. It proves his visit. And he had feet, a feet of strength. I mean, I'm not sure if there's any anything else we can do. So we'll have a quick gander. Is there anything else we can do? Yeah, Peter Carey was trying to conceal the murder of John Nelligan's father. Without any more information, I think we've finished this case. And I think we now have to think about who it is. Right, uh, the valuable papers were stolen. And I think that's what Nelligan was doing, trying to break in. Because he, he wasn't just he wasn't trying to retrieve the, the notebook because he'd killed it. I think... I, th I wouldn't be surprised if he had the books, looked for the papers, kind of maybe put the notebook out just to try and see if he could find them, drops it because he sees the body and legs it. Hurtley, I don't know how serious this was. Oh dear. Oh, I should re reread the... Uh... Oh no. Oh no. Reread the note. I mean... I have done nothing dishonourable. Remember our vows. So, he's writing this to Judith. Remember our vows. And I think it's kind of a... She was doing... He was doing it kind of harmless flirting, kind of cheer her up. And they're both at this point, we shouldn't be doing this. I've done nothing dishonourable. Remember our vows. Vows. Just hiding them. So, I think he's in this. I think... That's just harmless flirting. That means we've only got one person, and that means Ken's. I think Ken's did it. Feet of strength. He was that. He was there. I wouldn't be surprised if he went. They had a drink. He asked him directly. He admitted it. Then um, Kerry admitted it, and put in a drunken, in drunken fury. Or maybe in drunken fury, he said, "Oh, yeah, you accused me." Pulled out his knife, and then Cairns attacked him. Now, yeah, Peter Carey was murdered by Patrick Cairns. Cairns is a professional harpooner. His tobacco patch was found inside Carey's cabin. Condemn him. He's a cold-blooded murderer. He's been found guilty of the murder of Peter Carey and must be punished. Or absolve him. Patrick Cairns killed Peter Carey, but the murder was not premeditated. It was in self-defense against an armed and irrational drunken sailor. I think this is where we start getting into the realms of morality versus legality that Sherlock Holmes asks at times. There are times when, I know you plan to kill the per. I think, I think it's that study in Scarlet where he lets, the, I think he lets the guy go. Oh, that's frustrating. I, I can't remember. I actually, I've got the book, no, oh, the book's quite a way away. Um... Oh, that annoys me. I should know this. Pike's going to complain, isn't he? I think... What he was doing was, to an extent, justice. Especially at the point where, if he, ha if it had been revealed, he would be... He, he would have been hanged, uh, would carry. And... Considering he drew his knife... I'm guessing he drew his knife... Went for Kearns... In a drunken fury... No, yeah. And then Kearns grabbed the harpoon. Because it wasn't that he walked... He didn't walk in with a harpoon. He didn't walk in, take the harpoon and use it. They were sitting down. There were two glasses. I'm going to absolve. I think absolve is the correct one there. Or it's the one I will do. Confirm your moral choice. Yes. There we go. The next day.
afternoon. I must be at the wrong address. I'd like to speak with a ship's captain, a Captain Ahab. Is that you? No. My name is Sherlock Holmes. A detective fella. So, you wanted to see me? That is correct. We need to talk. About what? About Black Peter, who was killed in his own hut with a harpoon. You know, don't you? Yes. How? The tobacco pouch. You recognized it. Oh, the sailor. It was you. I wasn't wearing a disguise. Well, How? Fine. I confess. But if you really do know everything, you should also know that I didn't want to kill him. He made me do it. I know. Did you know about this story with the bond certificates? Did you need money? Yeah. I just wanted him to cough up a little silver. I'm out of work, and I thought maybe he could help me. Well, he refused outright, and he insulted me. I reminded him I knew all about that murder he committed at sea in 1883. Then he got mad when I spoke about his treasure. I barely just had time to throw the harpoon at him before he could jump at me with his knife. You know the truth? Mm. What will you do now? I ask that you return the bond certificates. Keep some of them. You will need them in your exile. It is better that you leave the country for a few years. And you won't say anything to the police? I will not say anything as long as you return the money. Well, I'll do as you ask. But what about Inspector Lestrade? I will deal with him. Goodbye. Sometime later. How, how would you deal with him? Oh, just prove the innocence of the others. We do need to talk. About what? What do you mean? Our case, Mr. Holmes. You sent me a message via your little thug. His name is Wiggins, Inspector. Telling me that the case is solved. Well, Mr. Holmes, tell me, who is our murderer and where is he? The morgue. Eh? His name is, or rather was, Pablo Coventral. He was also on the ship with Peter Carey, and he was a harpooner. I'll tell you everything, Inspector, but do calm down. Mrs. Hudson will bring us tea and orange cake. Orange cake? You're spoiling me, Mr. Holmes. That's my favourite. That's bribery, Holmes. Bribery. Are we going to hang him? Ah, Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade told me that I should thank you for clearing my name. He also said that you were waiting for me here. I came as fast as I could. I cannot thank you enough. It's all because of you that this nightmare is finally over. I believe that this belongs to you. My father's securities. Incredible. But how did you get them? It would take far too long to explain. Yes. Tell me, this is extraordinary. You are a genius. Then that may serve as an explanation. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Nelligan, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes, and thank you. A thousand times thank you. Right. Peter Carey was murdered by Patrick Kearns, a professional harpooner, the only one capable of executing such an accurate throw. His, tabac his tobacco cap pouch was found inside Carey's cabin, but the murder was in self-defence against an armed and furious drunken sailor. What do you do with a drunken sailor? You stab him with a harpoon, is the answer to the song. You have decided to absolve Patrick Kearns. Clues found. 16. Conclusion. Kearns is guilty. Moral choice. Absolve Kearns. Hold to, to check your conclusion. May spoil game experience. Uh, I don't know. Should I do that? I'm scared. What will this do? 16 out of 16. Oh, right. Oh, okay, so I did get it right that Kearns was guilty. Oh, is that all it checks? Because it was saying condemn him. It's like, oh, he's a cold-blooded killer. Absolve. Oh, no, it was in self-defense. So, hmm. Okay, so all it was doing is checking this. May spoil game experience. Unless it tells you exactly what the correct answer is, it shouldn't really do that, maybe. Okay, we'll accept that decision. Warning, you're about to finish the case. The save files for this case will be removed. Press no if you'd like to select another moral choice. Press, press yes if you agree with the choice you've made and you are ready to start a new chapter. Onwards to the next chapter, then. So that is a correct answer. That's interesting. Your rank. Personality ranking. Simp 
sympathizing. Case statistics, people solved the case the same way, 77%. People made the same moral choice, 63%. Okay. Sympath I'm sympathetic and empathetic and sensitive. Uh, we, you can tell that from other games, though. Continue. Wonderful. I like having those little things that pop up and tell you what you're doing. And tell you, like, uh, in comparison to other people who are playing the game. Now, at this point, um, Riddle on the Rails, we're going to not play, we're not going to go straight into it. Um, I think I'm going to cut it there. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this first case, and I hope you'll come back for more. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching.